Now I came across Roger Witherspoon's blog. It's called Energy Matters. And I can tell you from going back into the NRC documents that Roger Witherspoon was a character that the people at the NRC really tried to avoid. Roger Witherspoon had really piercing questions that the NRC simply just didn't want to answer. He gathered the story about the Operation Tamadachi, what the soldiers have been going through. So I thought I would just share that with you. Nothing to worry about. The official position of the U.S. Navy is that there was very little radioactive contamination of any of its personnel. The Defense Department created the Tamadachi Medical Registry over a two-year period compiling the medical records of some 70,000 military personnel and their families who could have been exposed to varying amounts of radiation during the crisis in Japan. The registry was completed in December of 2012. One month later, the department concluded that their estimates of the maximum possible whole body and thyroid doses of contaminants were not severe enough to warrant further examination. The registry, the only valid way to determine over time if there is a pattern of illness which could be traced to the exposure was abandoned. Overlooked, however, is the fact that the Navy's registry, as a tool to accurately chronicle medical anomalies among the 70,000 contaminated Americans, was flawed at its inception. The Navy did not conduct a thorough medical examination of each person to establish an accurate baseline of their health. That meant there was no real way to know the actual baseline health condition for each individual. Without the baseline, Veterans Administration physicians could not tell if the development of a tumor or asthma or cyst inside the body or on the skin represented a radical departure from the patient's condition at the time of exposure to radiation or if the condition predated Operation Tamadachi. Without the baseline or the active registry showing similar medical issues among many servicemen and women, there's little chance for veterans to successfully claim that exposure duration lay at the root of their health problems. Still, I'm always in favor of collecting data. None of the Defense Department's exposure assessments take into account the hot particles in the sailor's lungs. Collateral damage. My health started going south at the beginning of last year, said Mickey, the F-18 structural mechanic and hazmat coordinator on the USS Reagan. On March 30th, I was standing in formation during the change of command in California, and I passed out for the first time. Jennifer Mickey. It told me I was just dehydrated, so I sat there in the medic area and drank a bottle of water. Then on April 29, I passed out once more, and this time they took me to the emergency room and told them I had a headache. They said, we found this mass in your brain. I've had two surgeries since then, and I'm out of the Navy. Technically, what the doctor found was a level 2 oligostructoma cancer in Mickey's frontal lobe. Incurable cancer which lodges in the area of the brain, responsible for coherent speech. Removing the bulk of the growth leaves a cavity which in some cases can collapse and cause collateral damage. After Mickey's second surgery last fall, she was informed that not active right now, the parts that they left up there are just sitting there dormant. I know they're up there. It's not as bad as it could be since they aren't doing anything and it doesn't hurt. I'll go back to the hospital every two months to have it checked. It's pretty stressful. Living means she is back where it all began, on her parents' farm in Wisconsin, waiting for the next eruption of her cancer. At this point, said Mickey, I had so many doctor's appointments that it's difficult really to do anything as far as getting a job five days a week. Mickey has reconciled herself to living with the unpredictable. My future plans haven't changed severely, she said. I still plan on going to college, getting a good job, and continuing life. As for the cancer, it's a part of me like living with your hand. You come to terms with it and live with it. You live for today, be yourself, and enjoy life for as long as you can. She's part of the group suing TEPCO for misleading the American government about the condition of its reactors and the true release of the radiation, which she blames for her condition. I'm just mainly doing it so it doesn't happen to anybody else, just so somebody is held accountable, she explained. Hiding stuff messes with people's lives in the long run, and I don't want to see this happen to anybody else. As for the Navy, I don't see where they could have done much more. 
It's not something you train for. They did the best they could with the information they had. And I have great memories of the people I worked with and the places I've been. To some degree, Mickey is fortunate that she passed out and was diagnosed while still in the Navy. At the moment, her medical expenses are being covered, but that may change. The doctors have not determined yet if it is the service connected, Mickey said. Since the Defense Department has predetermined that radiation did not cause any illness among its personnel and has canceled the Tamadachi Medical Registry, which is the only epidemiological way to determine patterns of health problems. Mickey may yet become a Navy veteran with an incurable cancer and no health care. And these people are aging fast. Accelerated aging.